So um, this video should be shorter because um, we still got you know more videos on Thursday and then kind of um, probably maybe a little bit of finishing up videos next week because um, the room's not really going to take a whole week of videos. Um, uh, I want to do just a little bit more. So this should, video should be shorter, um, much more like the first kind of concept video. Um, just to kind of show you how to extend kind of the um, part of the lamp that we don't see, right? We're not going to make the brace yet. We'll save that for the next set of videos um, for later in the week. Um, so we'll be able to do those videos and get the lamp mostly done, if not done, um, by um, the end of the week, um, video-wise, right, lecture-wise. Um, so in this case, remember, whenever you come into a scene, right, you open up my it's empty. So of course we go file. Now we don't create a project this time, right? We already created that, right? We're, we're going to work on project two for the next two weeks and do two models, right? Two scenes. So in this case, this case, I go to set project though to make it the active project. So I go file set project, and then we go to project two. Remember, you don't open it; you just select the folder, hit set. There we go, and then we go file open scene, and there it is, project two lamp. Boom. Don't save. Continue. There we go. And it loads up the reference image and everything, right? That's important. That's kind of one of those important things, right? So that uh, loads up everything. Now, in this case, what I wanted to do is I just wanted to make the part that's going to go eventually the light bulb. We're going to save the light bulb and the brace for um, the next video lectures for later in the week. But I did want to kind of make, because there's going to be a little more of this lamp that we didn't see that's going to go up here. Now, the cool thing is this is mostly going to be that extruding border edge stuff we did for our bed post, right? Remember how we kind of extrude board edges in the bed post, kind of ch -ch -ch -ch, right, create stuff. Um, we're going to do that, right? So that's just going to give us a little more practice at that. Um, but I am going to show you a cool feature of multi-cut, and that's actually kind of the big thing. So I just wanted to kind of show you a uh, neat feature of multi-cut um, and give you like a little example of that. So it's kind of more just a way to show you some new tools that you can use on this stuff. But the core of it's going to be what we actually have already done before with the bed post. We're going to do more. We're going to do more extruding board edges on stuff as we go along um, this semester. Now in this case, what happens when I have a lampshade that's going to be in the way of doing this work, right? And also you'll notice I don't really need the reference picture anymore at this point, right? It's going to still have it in here, but all the stuff that I really need it for, the lampshade and the lamp base, is good. So at this point, what I can do is I can select this object. Um, remember, you can hold down shift and click on the edge to select the image plane also. If you still want it up, you can do that. Um, probably won't hurt just to give us an idea where the lampshade's at. And remember, there's this guy right here, right? The kind of little blue dotted box, kind of white cursor that's called Isolate Select. It is in the show menu over here, Isolate Select, right? There's a quick key for it. Um, you can do bookmarks for Isolate Select stuff. So you kind of can have some options there for it. But there is a button right here. And remember, what this does is it's a great way to just show what you're working on, right? It didn't delete anything. It's just showing only what you had selected, right? Remember, you do have the ability to display, hide and show. I kind of showed that in some earlier videos, right? Um, but you want to probably take advantage of Outliner with that, right? Windows, um, Outliner, right? So that way, any objects that are hidden, you can select them in here and unhide them. Uh, usually, they'll be darker gray, right? You see how these are kind of all regular gray? But anything that's hidden will be kind of like a dark or much more muted gray. Uh, so remember, uh, Display does have proper hide and show features. Um, but in this case, I just often find it's easier just to use um, Isolate Select in Maya, right? Um, so that's that guy, and that's a toggle. So if you want to show everything again, you just click on it to undo it, right? So this shows everything again. But in this case, like I said, I just want to select kind of both of these, isolate, select. Oh. Remember, hold down Shift so you can select on the edge of that one. There we go. There we go. And if you don't want Outliner to be up at all, you can just right-click on the word Outliner here, close tab, so you can have it up or down when you want it. And I'm going to click on the, the lamp, right? Just left-click on it. Remember. Hold down right make sure in object mode, and we can left click on it. All right. Now in this case, I want to kind of zoom in a little bit, right? Alt, right mouse button, right? Alt left rotates camera. Alt middle, if you hold down the scroll wheel like a button, right? Is move. Alt right mouse button to zoom. I know you're tempted to use scroll wheel for zoom. It's jumpy, right? Use alt right mouse button. Alt right mouse button for zoom. It's smoother zoom. And press down the scroll wheel as a button, right? You don't scroll it. You just Press it down like it's an actual mouse button. And that actually is, that makes it act like a middle mouse button. Alt middle moves, alt left rotates. Now in this case, we're going to extrude border edges again, right? We kind of saw that on our bed post. So we hold down right mouse button, right? Particularly over your object. That way you know it's getting the selection type for that object, not for a different object. And remember, you have all your selection types here. We want to go to edge mode. 
Now I'm going to double left click, right, on one of these border edges, right? Double cl left click on a border edge. These edges right here are not border edges, right? So if there's at least two faces connected to a border ed uh, an edge, that means it's not a border edge. And if you extrude it, it creates non-manifold geometry, which generally is not good. Um, not only if you ever have to smooth it, will it smooth really weird in there, it'll look weird in smooth preview or sub Ds, uh, but even things like uh, multi-cuts and bevels will not work in that area, right? Generally, non-manifold geometry is bad. Non-manifold geometry, and I talked about this in an earlier video, is when you have um, three faces connected to a single edge, right? Two faces connected to a single edge is normal and works fine. Uh, and that's what a border edge is, right? These edges, this edge loop, you'll notice how they're only connected to one face. So when we extrude them, there will be two faces connected to that edge, which is normal and will not, I repeat, not create non-manifold geometry. So non-manifold geometry, bad, right? Generally causes all kinds of problems. Um, so don't ever really, I should say never, but rarely ever extrude regular edges, right? Any edge that's got two faces connected, don't extrude that. Um, basically the only thing you should ever extrude are objects for thickening, uh, faces, you know, polygons for the normal extrusion and border edges, right? And remember, border edges are edges that only have one face connected to them. That method of extruded border edges is actually powerful and can do a lot of neat modeling. Uh, we'll see that here and as we go on, we do some other models later on. So I'm going to extrude, right? There we go. Now, in this case, by default, you'll notice the extrude tool is set to move along normal direction, right? You'll notice how these edges are, that this uh, blue arrow is not exactly set to the world. So when I move them, you'll see how they'll kind of go out and get bigger. We don't really want that. That's one of the reasons why I don't like using this manipulator for extruding a lot of the time. Sometimes it's great, like thickening, awesome. Um, you'll see when we do some other modeling later on, it can also be great. So there are times when it's really cool, but I'm kind of like have like a 70-30 rule with that. 70% of the time, the default extrude manipulator along normal direction is kind of annoying. Uh, and only about 30% of the time is it really awesome. So I extrude it, right? And then I hit regular W for the move tool. That way, because it's usually to set to, to world by default, and we'll talk about this more in later projects, right? Um, but if you ever need to, or your manipulator is behaving weirdly, just click on this little um, kind of triangle down here and make sure it's set to world. And I can just, you know, W for move, right? It's right here. I can just left click grab on this green arrow to move it up, right? Now in this case, I might not want this quite as thick as that, so I might even hit R for scale, right? And remember, you can grab that let that center guy, right? There's that light blue one in the center. If you left click drag on that, that scales everything in the same direction. Although that green square will do the, basically the same thing also. So we can kind of bring this in a little bit to kind of make a, a thinner shaft for what's going to connect up to the light bulb, right? And I moved it up a little bit just so it gives us a little bit of rounded curvature there. And I can hit extrude again. And I hit W for regular move tool so it goes to world, right? For, uh, default, usually the move tool set to world. Because we want to move these straight up. And now you'll see what I can do is I can just kind of move this shaft up to kind of create the part that the light bulb is going to go into, right? So believe it or not, you can start with and build most of your lamp with a revolve, but then the section maybe where you don't have a picture, you might find it's just a lot easier to do it with extrude border edge. Now remember, F is your quick key for frame selection. F, right? A is fit all, which fits everything. F is frame selection. You'll see they are kind of here, right? Frame all, frame selection. And you see the quick key for frame selection right there. And that's great because it zooms in on whatever's selected. And that could be an object, an edge loop, faces, vertices, whatever is selected, right? Multiple selection types support F for frame selection. But it does zoom your cursor in on the selection and it does uh, zoom your camera in and it sets your camera rotate around the selection. So it's a great way to kind of focus, if you will, on what you're working on, what you currently have selected. Now in this case, I want this to be a little bit bigger to go around the light bulb up there. So once again, we'll do some more extrusions. Remember, Control E is the quick key for that. Control E. I'll hit W for regular move, move it up a little bit. And then I'm going to hit R for scale. Grab that center one to scale it out a little bit. Remember, don't grab on the regular handles, right? The, uh, the red and dark blue ones. Don't grab on those because it'll make it oval. And then you go, why does my lamp look oval? Well, you weren't careful when you selected your scale tools. So when you're doing this stuff, and you notice how my symmetry is off, how, symmetry off of this stuff, guys, right? I, I did start to show you guys symmetry on the bed post the other day, right? But off, right? For this stuff, you don't really want it on. We'll see some symmetry on the lamp, but not right now. Particularly when you're working with stuff that's kind of cylindrical in shape, kind of uh, uniform cylindrical shape like this, 
Symmetry is going to do weird stuff to it. So have symmetry off unless you really need it. In this case, that's why we're using the center one or this one because it'll scale along two or all three, and that keeps it nice and circular. So I'll hit extrude again. R for scale because I want to make this wider, right? Extrude again. R for scale, make that a little bit wider. W for move, move it up a little bit because see, I'm kind of trying to create my own little rounded corners here. Extrude again, W for move, move it up. Because this is going to kind of be where the actual light bulb goes, right? And yours can be a little thinner than mine. I'll hit F for frame selection again. And I'll extrude. W for move, move it up a little bit. R for scale. Remember, left click, drag on that center one so it scales all three dimensions at the same time, making this smaller, right? So if you scale it out, it'll make it bigger. If you scale it in, it'll make it smaller. Depends on if you drag to the right or the left, right? And then I'll extrude again, R for scale, scale this in. And then of course we can extrude again, R for scale, scale in a little bit. W for move to move it down a bit. And then extrude again, W for move, move it down. So this is just extruding border edges. That was it, we've done this before, right? And we're getting used to our extrude tool. It's a great way to create new geometry that we can then move somewhere um, to create a whole extended structure, right? Um, and we used move because by default set the world and we used scale that allowed us to easily change and shape the, the size So to make things wider like in these areas, right? It was just our scale tool, but to make things kind of taller It was our move tool, right? So this is really just was extrude and we used move and scale to create shape, right? Now in this case, I've got these rounded corners and they're they could be a little more rounded, right? So this is where I wanted to show you your multi-cut with a new feature. So I'm gonna turn multi-cut on. And we know that if we scroll down, right, we have the snap percentage size, which is set to 50. But you'll notice that there's something right below that called edge flow, right, edge flow. Now I'm gonna click on edge flow. The default controls for this should be fine, right? You can control the, t the tension if you want to more, the number of subdivisions, um, but the default's 181 and one should be fine. But you notice this is a check mark that we can turn off and on. Now, if I have it off, right? So I'm gonna leave it off for the moment. And I go up to here and I hold down control, right? Because remember, if you hold down control, that puts it into edge loop adding mode. And then you put it over the cur the edge that you wanna add it in. It's gonna go perpendicular to, right? Now in this case, I don't wanna put the edges this way. I wanna put it this way. But remember, it, it does depend on the edge you're over. So if I add an edge loop right here, you see how it stays flat? And there's times when you're gonna want that, right? Where you just wanna put it in and it stays flat. If I turn edge flow on and I hold down control, it puts it in and pushes it out a little bit to round it. Oh, that's cool, isn't it? So you see how I can kind of go in here and round off these corners a little bit just by checking edge flow on. And then when I hold down control to put edge loops in, you see how it'll kind of round in that direction too. I'm gonna go down here, put one in there just to round that one off a little bit. And we get this nice little extra bit of kind of roundness in these areas. So that's really, really cool to know that you can actually do with this tool, edge flow, right? So that's what edge flow does, right? Is it puts an edge loop in, but it does tend to push it out or in a little bit to kind of create and maintain some curvature there. Um, so we'll turn that off. It's good to have it off by default and then turn it on when you need it. Um, so if you're ever if you're ever go to multi cut like in this area and you're like oh man I didn't I didn't want it to do that remember turn edge flow off and then it does it normally right so multi cut has that edge flow feature which is kind of neat now if you ever needed to kind of make little minor adjustments to the position for these like let's uh, you know hold down right mouse button edge mode double left click on it I'll hit F for frame selection if I hit my move tool so it's not really kind of sliding along the surface right. There is, if you go to Mesh Tools, a tool called Slide Edge. Now, you don't necessarily need to use this on this. It's something that you don't use that often, but it is useful when you do need it. So Mesh Tools Slide Edge, and you see it prompts you to drag the middle mouse button. So if I hold down middle mouse button and drag it left or right, you see how it slides this edge loop along the existing surface, right? So it's actually kind of sliding when you do it this way, it's sliding along these edges, move along these, and when you slide it this way, it's moving along these edges. Kind of neat, right? Are you necessarily going to need that on this project? No.
but it's great to know about. And we'll talk about it a little more later on as well, but you do have a slide edge tool, right? And that's a great way to kind of be able to slide surfaces, uh, edges, or edge loops, right? It could be single edges, but it could be edge loops. Mesh tools, slide edge. Oh, mesh tools, slide edge, come on, there we go. And you saw I could slide that way or this way. So kind of neat. Like I said, you're not gonna need it all the time, but definitely good to know that you have it when you need it, slide edge tool. You probably won't need it on this, but if you do, it's right there. And it just takes whatever edge we have selected and slides it along the existing kind of edges that are kind of perpendicular to that edge loop or edge you have selected. Now the last thing we notice, if we go back to object mode, right? Hold down right mouse button over the object, go to object mode, is we have kind of all this fastening going on, right? And we've seen this already with our bed post and some other stuff. That's just the smoothing angle between these polygons, right? It's just the smoothing angle between these polygons. So basically what's going on there is that um, these polygons where they meet at an edge right here, right? Uh, the, they're shading independent of each other, right? And that's because the, uh, the edge that the angle, um, the angle that the, the faces meet at this edge is um, uh, too high for it to smooth, right? Because by default, I think it's set to like 30 degrees and this is bigger than 30 degrees. And so what it does is it shades these each individually, whereas we want them to kind of shade collectively. And you can control that based on the angle of the edge. And remember that's in mesh display and it's these three guys right here. Now soft and hardened edges actually gives you the ability to pick the angle itself, right? So you can actually pick the default angle. But in this case, if you just want it all 180, you all want it soft, which we want in this case, you just go mesh display soften edge. So that gives a nice kind of 180 degree smoothing so that these it didn't add geometry, right? It's still the same geometry with the same shape, but it does make them shade collectively instead of individually. And it's based on the angle the polygons meet at, at this, these edges. The bigger the angle, the more it smooths everything. The lower, the more it kind of makes it look faceted, like they're all individually shaded. And now that looks smooth, even in low res. And of course we could turn isolate select off right there to show up everything. And that'll be a great place to stop for the lamp until our next lectures later in the week.